Well, good morning. I'm Danielle Wiggins. Thanks for joining me on another 3 News Now morning update. It's Friday, March 12th. Yes, finally Friday. The weekend is almost here and so is spring. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me on the WKYC Facebook, Instagram and YouTube pages. Remember to share your thoughts on the stories covered and join me in the comment section so you can join that conversation there and that's how you talk with me there. You can also let me know your name and where you're watching from. Now, speaking of spring, we've got some great news. Governor Mike DeWine says all county fairs will resume this summer. Remember, fair season starts in June, and of course, some restrictions will still apply, including social distancing and limiting grandstand audiences to 30%. Meantime, the city of Cleveland says that all 20 outdoor pools, along with playgrounds and recreation facilities, will open in June. That's great news ahead of summer and, of course, spring, which officially starts on March 20th. But 3 News meteorologist Matt Standridge is tracking some milder temperatures than what we've seen over the past couple days. Uh, how long will those cooler temperatures last? And of course, Matt has the answers. Hey, Matt. Hey, Danielle, we have a great Friday forecast for you. We started cool this morning with 30s and 40s, but we're warming up and I think we'll top out well into the 50s. It might be a little bit closer to the low 50s, upper 40s, right along the lake shore where we've got some northwest winds blowing over a very cold Lake Erie, but you head farther inland and we should be well into the 50s this afternoon. But you got to watch out later this evening. There'll be another weak cold front pushing through. And that's the key word. It's going to be fairly weak and it's going to be dry, too. So we're not expecting any rain to be squeezed out of this one, but that passes through just just after sunset and it'll reinforce some of this cooler air going into this weekend. So 50s today and maybe only 40s this weekend. We'll probably start tomorrow morning though for your Saturday below freezing well into those 20s. Here's your Subaru seven day outlook this weekend. 40s. Remember, we got a spring forward on Sunday morning, uh, but temperatures this time of year should be at about the mid 40s. So honestly, we're most days that we press forward. We're either near average or we're above average. Notice next week we have St. Patrick's Day. That's on Wednesday and we're watching two little systems try to make their way towards Ohio. I think one comes right before St. Patrick's Day and the other comes right after St. Patrick's Day. But until then, enjoy the sunshine today, Danielle. And enjoy the sunshine this weekend as well. All right. Thank you so much, Matt. Now happening today at the White House, President Biden will hold a ceremonial signing of the new COVID relief bill. But Republicans argue the $1.9 trillion aid package is too much and isn't targeted enough. The ceremonial signing comes a day after the president's first primetime address since taking office. President Biden is calling on states to make vaccines available to everyone by May 1st. No more searching day and night for an appointment. I need you to get vaccinated when it's your turn and when you can find an opportunity. The president says he's doubling the number of federal vaccination centers and mobilizing thousands of retired doctors and nurses to help administer shots. His goal is that we can celebrate together by the 4th of July. And it looks like money from the COVID relief package will be hitting bank accounts sooner than expected. Single payments of up to $1,400 to individuals and double that for married couples will be deposited as early as Saturday for those with direct deposit information on file with the IRS. Checks and debit cards are expected to be sent out starting next week. On top of that $1,400 stimulus check, parents will receive an additional bonus for each child. If you want to calculate how much money you will receive, we have a calculator and more details posted on WKYC.com. And some good news from Governor Mike DeWine when it comes to the number of coronavirus cases in the state. We are at 155 cases per 100,000 people during the past two weeks. So remember, our target is 50 cases per 100,000 to be able to lift all restrictions in the state. While we are still seeing higher numbers, the data is trending in the right direction. Governor DeWine also says regulations for nursing home visits will be scaled back. You'll be allowed to visit with residents inside unless there's an outbreak at the facility or an extreme number of cases in the community. Visitors will also be allowed in rooms of long-term care residents. 
Alrighty, it is time for three things you should know this morning happening around our area. First, the former Cleveland police officer who shot and killed 12 year old Tamir Rice will not be getting his job back. An appeals court dismissed an appeal filed by the Cleveland Police Union over Timothy Lohman's termination. Lohman was fired for lying on his application to become a city police officer. A police investigation continues at Rocky River High School this morning. Two staff members were placed on leave after a school officials were made aware that they spoke inappropriately about a student. Parents were notified in a letter, but the district did not offer further details. The district said it immediately launched an investigation as well. And Cleveland has been trying to make professional soccer work in the city for years. And we just marked a new chapter in that pursuit. The Cleveland Crunch is back. The city hasn't had an indoor soccer team since the force dissolved in 2005. They made the big announcement yesterday with past stars and the newest members of the team on hand. One of the big remaining questions though is where the team will play. We are in uh, ongoing talks with local venues here. We're talking to the uh, auditorium. We just got a tour, uh, tour up today and that could be a great potential home for these, you know, for the uh, reincarnation of the crunch here. We're talking to CSU, Georgia's old stomping grounds. So we, we fully expect to have at least finalized, you know, hopefully within the next two to three months. The Crunch played for most of their original run at the Woolstein Center back when it was called the CSU Convocation Center. For the time being, they'll play at the North Olmsted Sportsplex. So great to have soccer back, professional soccer back here in Cleveland. And this morning we have a story out of Mentor about a 10 year old boy battling health issues whose mother is asking all of us for a small act of kindness. Jasmine Monroe shares their journey and how to help. I think before I went to the hospital, I was perfectly fine. 10 year old Owen Seifert isn't just your average kid. I like playing football, basketball. I like my playing on my Xbox with my friends a lot. He's also adventurous. He even completed a marathon. But it wasn't until January 1st when things took a turn for the worst. I could just tell that, you know, something wasn't right. So she called Owen's pediatrician, and at the time, they thought it was a bug going around. But it wasn't. It was MISC, which is a complication of COVID-19 in children. I wanted to go to the hospital because my stomach was hurting really bad, so I was kind of happy, but I was kind of nervous because I didn't know what was going to happen. 16 days in the hospital, three days in ICU. Owen was fighting for his life. There was one point in the hospital where um, he could barely open his eyes and he looked in my direction of my voice and he said, Mom, I feel like I'm gonna die. His last words before surgery, but a miracle happened inside. They put me to sleep and I was in a dream and I was just walking down this path and then I saw um, someone on a white horse and then I went up to them and they told me everything was going to be okay and that I'd be fine. Kristen, Owen's mother, described it as a miracle they'll never forget because she couldn't imagine life without her son. I remember looking at him through the window and he was hooked up to all the machines and um, his eyes were closed and I just looked up and I said, Lord, please don't let me leave this hospital without my son because I'm a strong mom, but I couldn't be that strong. 14 days later, we, we were going home together. A true testimony for a 10 year old boy with a champion spirit. I'm so proud of him. He fought really, really hard. Oh, such a great story, Jasmine. And remember, we have this story posted on WKYC.com if you would like to send a card. So again, um, the mother is asking for all of us to send a card to him for his birthday, uh, which is at the end of the month. So the address is in the story where you can send a birthday card to him. So we are so excited about that. Well, thank you for taking time to join me for this 3 News Now morning update. Our digital team will continue to bring you the stories making headlines around Northeast Ohio and beyond. Make sure you continue to check our social media pages and WKYC.com throughout the day. And also, don't forget to spring forward this weekend. 
I know we're losing an hour of sleep, but I don't want you to be late to wherever you need to go Sunday morning. I'm Danielle Wiggins, and I'll see you next week on Go. Have a great weekend, everybody.